So a much calmer Buck Show Walter from the eighth inning when he was ejected by Mark Carlson. Jim Palmer joins us now. Jim, first, uh, what's your opinion on what Morales did by going after Davis, and what's your opinion on how Mark Carlson handled it? Well, you know, you can't read minds, even though we had an umpire in Boston. Remember when Jimenez right. got thrown out with a shutout going after the hard slide by Sandoval, so he just figured when he hit him and uh, was, that he was trying to throw at him, and he not didn't warn him, he just tossed right. him out of the game. Uh it's silly. I mean, Morales, what is he doing? You know, this is, when we talk about Cam, I, and, and Rick and I learned this from, from Earl Weaver. Earl didn't like to have you throw it, guys. You know, it's a macho thing because if you have a good team, Kansas City has a good team, the Orioles have a good team, Kansas City a little bit better. They're going to the postseason. Orioles are trying to go. When you start throwing at people, people get hurt. And I remember when Grant Jackson came over, we're in Seattle, and he buzzed somebody up and in, and Earl sprinted to the mound and he said, is our third baseman better than theirs? He went right around the field. And he said, I don't want anybody hurt. And the only time he ever told, I think, any of our pitchers, and I was the guy when Reggie's told Doc Ellis, you want to hit somebody, hit me, and he hit him in the side of the he face. He hit him in the Ooh. face. Yeah, and, I was there and for that one too. I, you know, he said, well, as I went out to pitch the ninth inning, he said, we can't let that happen. And it was so blatant. Now, umpire heard it, but didn't do anything. And, it, you know, L. Rod Hendricks let off. He flew out to, to right field, and then... It took me about five pitches to hit Mickey Rivers, <laughs> you know. But, again, you just don't throw at people because people are getting hurt. And, you know, I think both of these guys, uh, you know, a couple of things. First of all, um, Buck Showalter's happy that Chris Davis didn't get hurt. And, right. don't, and don't think that last series when the Yankees come in, the possibility to be in the playoff picture, that somebody won't pay for the way they, they threw at uh, Chris Davis when he was up in New York. So that's going to happen. And then Ned Yost is happy that when Givens did hit Morales, he did what you're supposed to do. Right. He, and, and Morales hit Chris Davis. Shouldn't have hit him, but he hit him in the right spot of the body. You know, if you start throwing at the head, the wrist, you broke your hand, uh, yeah. turn it into a pitch. That's when people get hurt. That's when people get uh, get angry. That's when, when you have fights. And then when you have fights, invariably somebody gets injured, and you don't want that to happen. They kind of handled it pretty well. And Mark Carlson said, hey, you know what? Tit for tat. Well, you know, the, 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 yeah. the only thing that, that I don't understand, and, and I know they have edicts from the league office, and I'm, I'm certainly not criticizing Carlson, but if he felt there was intent to issue warnings, why not eject the pitcher for intentionally throwing at Chris Davis? I, I just don't understand that because you're penalizing what? the Orioles by issuing the warnings. If he felt there was intent to issue the warnings, just throw the guy out of the game. Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that, but you have to understand when you talk about players, young players, veteran players, Sometimes the game speeds up. It speeds up for umpires, too. And if you told Mark Carlson, hey, and they'll probably have a meeting, Denver, you know this, yeah. uh, hey, next time maybe you need to handle a little bit differently. Can't read minds, but it was pretty obvious when you been stick a ball in that all run. week yeah. long. Yeah, this exactly. is the third so. time this week he's been hitting, one time over his head. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I thought Buck Showwater made a great point. He said, listen, that inning, you know, Ryan Mould hit a 2-0 pitch. He worked the count off a real tough right-hander, Herrera. Maybe he was at the top of his game. You know, I just said now this gives you a chance to and all to look for your pitch. He got it. Grand slam. Uh, the at bat that Jonathan Scope had to get Clevenger to the plate off of Chamberlain. I mean, he got him, what, one and two count, fouled off pitches, great sliders, trying to get him out with something other than his fastball, walked him, and then Clevenger gets a pitch that he can pull. And it was just a whole inning of what you hoped or wish the Orioles could have done all year long. They really had some great at bats. And at the end of the day, you almost forget who started the game, the starting pitchers, right. <laughs> because right. so much so much happened in the ballgame. Well, well, what kind of a night was it? Jonathan Scope, for the first time all year, walked twice in the same game. No, That's they, walked, a, they walked him. No, actually, yeah. you know, you got to walk Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, he, but but the walk off the Chamberlain, right, he really right. did earn. Uh, All right. I kind of say that facetiously. We but. appreciate you stopping by. Thank you, James. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, we don't worry about the traffic. <laughs>